became a model. For me, the Proverbs 31 woman is not my favorite woman in the biblical text. Really? It's actually Queen Vashti. It's actually uh, Deborah. Those are two of my, of my favorite. Now, Welcome to Berean Babs. I'm your host, Vali Chikuni. We begin. She's Dr. Kerry Turner. She's a co-pastor at New Beth Church in Atlanta, where Jamo Bryant is the senior pastor. She's a pastor of cardiology. Okay, don't ask me why that title, but anyway, that's she is. She went to a seminary, she's educated, and she's a doctor. All right, so let's listen in to uh, you know, Miss Kerry Turner. We continue. I want you to just go read, right? Yes. I want you to go read about right. who the Proverbs 31 woman is. But um, she was a wife. She was a woman who moved in um, the marketplace. She, you know, added to her family. She was brilliant. She did business. She So she was incredible. And what she has really been used as uh, is a model of what a virtuous woman looks like. And so uh, really in Christendom, she has been made, you know, just this. The template she of is the, the ultimate yes, woman. she is the template. She is this iconic um, figure. She's a mother. She's all these wonderful things. And so uh, when we started to, to talk about it, while I honor uh, very much so and respect uh, the Proverbs 31 woman, I think there are some things about it that can be a little antiquated. Hit the horn um, on that one. You gotta sorry, hit the horn on that. <laughs> <laughs> I think it can be a, lot, a little antiquated because like, here and again, not every woman will get married, right? Not every woman will bear children. So then does that mean she is not virtuous? Does that mean that she does not add value to her community? Does that mean that she she can't stand at a gate because that's what, that's what the Proverbs 31 woman does? Yeah. You know, what does that mean? And so I think we have to be very careful um, while it can be inspiring and she's empowering on a number of, of different levels because uh, you can you can extract things from her from your life uh, that may not require you to have everything. But I think it's dangerous um, when we make people the model. I, I don't know if God said this is who you need to be. I think she is one person, uh, one woman in the biblical text that is highlighted that does all of these things. But I think somebody said this is who we all need to be. And so she became a model. For me, the Proverbs 31 woman is not my favorite woman in the biblical text. Who is? It's actually Queen Vashti. It's actually uh, Deborah. Those are two of my of my favorite. Now, some people will, will say, why in the world would you would you like Vashti. She was rebellious against her husband. You know what I mean? They, I like they, they put, like see that? See that? Like see that? See that? See that? <laughs> they, they, you know, they put her out. All right, guys. Before she continues, okay? So, once again, remember, Kerry Turner, she's a co-pastor at New Birth. She went to a seminary. She just told us her own words right here that she has an issue with Proverbs 31 woman. Guys, I've, this is my first time to hear any woman who's, who does not speak highly of a Proverbs, uh, Proverbs 31 woman, okay? Now, uh, just because the, the picture over here, right? remember the Proverbs 31 woman, this is a model, okay? This is a model. And this is, uh, this is King Lamuel's mom who was giving wisdom to his son. Okay, this is what, you know, this is what you should be looking for for a woman. This is the type of woman that you want. So this is a model of a woman uh, that the biblical text exhort us women to be, exhort a godly woman to be, okay? All of us, men and women, what we are to strive, right, to be conformed to, to Christ, okay? So you need to be like Christ, Okay, you need to be like Christ. So the picture that you have, the model that you have in a Proverbs 31 woman, this is a virtuous woman. All the good qualities that she has do conform to uh, to the scriptures. So why wouldn't you want to be a Proverbs 31 woman, let alone a woman pastor? And guess what then she said what she likes, right? She likes Queen Vashti. Queen Vashti, this is a pagan, right? Queen Vashti was... Um, uh, is that what? Zexis? Uh, at Zexis' wife, right? That's the one at Zexis ended up demoting the Queen Vashti and then uh, Queen Esther became, uh, became the queen. But nevertheless, he was a Persian and he was a pagan. So this lady likes Queen Vashti. Why? Because Queen Vashti, when um, King Artaxerxes had the visitors after they had their drunken, uh, you know, escapades, he wanted her to come in and parade her beauty, right? So the scripture doesn't say, but there's some extra uh, historians. They say that Queen Vashti didn't want to come because she was pregnant. 
and she didn't want to showcase herself pregnant, right? She was pregnant with uh, the future to be King Xerxes. So that's why she refused. But be that as it may, during that time, right, whatever the king asked, whether it was good, whether it was bad, you were just to obey, okay? And because she refused, and then the king was like, what? Women are going to start rebelling against us over here, okay? We need to uh, show her as an example, okay? So, yes, we know what it, you know, she was pagan, he was pagan, and whatever he was asking, it wasn't good, but that's what happened. So, but we have our lady over here, that's her favorite fun. She's entitled to have anybody as her favorite. But to me, being as a woman pastor, okay, you're telling me you like Queen Vash, okay, fine. You don't have to like Proverbs 31 woman. What about Sarah, right? The first Peter tells us, right? First Peter 1, 3, right? We are to be like daughters of Sarah. What about Abigail? There are so many examples in the scripture. And then she went on another one that she likes is Deborah. So we'll play her clip so you can hear why she likes Deborah. I'm like, uh-huh, because you, you, you are out there teaching and preaching. You think you're Deborah, no, you're not Deborah, but that's the situation, right? So remember what is Proverbs 31 uh, about, right? This is a picture, a model of what woman should be, okay? So there are examples in scripture, the woman that you're going to have, you're going to have all this in Proverbs, right? An adulterous woman. Do you want to be an adulterous woman? Okay, where are we? That's Proverbs 7, right? You're going to be a foolish woman. Do you want to be a foolish woman? Huh? <laughs> Obviously, you don't want to be a foolish woman, right? We have Queen Jezebel, okay? The way she ended up destroying her husband's kingdom, okay? Then we have a quarrelsome woman. Do you want to be a quarrelsome woman, right? Because uh, Paul says like, no, women, they are not to be busy bodies, right? This is Titus 2. You, you need to be quiet and submissive to your husband. Manage your home and your, uh, your um, uh, household, Okay? Do you want to be a wise woman? Okay. That's Proverbs 31 woman, a wise woman, a virtuous woman, a godly woman. So however you want to slice the cake, there are different categories of a what woman is going to be. So which type of woman do you want to be? So I find it very troubling for her being, you know, I mean, I guess she's a pastor, right? You know, which I don't believe, by the way, okay? We, we only give Pastor Linda. <laughs> okay, guys, that's the only woman pastor approved <laughs> on this channel. Anybody else? No, only Pastor Linda. All right, so this is uh, Proverbs 31. We're not going to read it, all of it, okay? I had high right here. So Proverbs 31, we have 20, right? Charm is deceitful and beauty is vain. But a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Give her of the fruit of her hands and let her works praise her in the gates. Okay, so this is the type of a woman that we are striving to be. Okay, a wise woman, a woman who fears God. So I don't understand, like she ended up just, you know, throwing a Proverbs 31 woman under the bus clip. Okay, so let's listen some more. But I love Queen Vashti. If you've ever uh, read the story, you know, her husband, who was the king at the time, was having uh, this party and this party went on for weeks. So it was very lavish. They were drinking. They were eating all of this type of stuff. As a part of it, the king wanted his wife to come out so that he can show her to the men who had been drinking with him. So imagine men drinking for um, a, a long period of time straight, eating all of this stuff. He wanted to come out. And at this time, men celebrated uh, separately from women. So the queen and the women were having their own celebration. The men were alone. He called her out, wanted her to come. And when you when you really look in context at this time, what he wanted her to do, he wanted her to come and parade her beauty naked in front of the men who have been drinking all of that time. Well, when she rebelled against him and said, no, she is not coming, the men gathered and said, now listen, you the king, this the queen, your wife telling you she's not going to come out and do what you told her to do. We got to figure out how to get rid of her because if I'm paraphrasing, y'all <laughs> using the message version, because right. if we don't, then other women will notice this and we're going to start having these same issues. And so eventually they got rid of Queen Vashti. They got rid of her. So we often talk about Esther, but we don't talk about Vashti. There would have never been an Esther had there never been a, a Vashti. And so to me, I love her because although the story didn't end the way that many biblical stories end, and it's like a happy ending, we don't hear anything 
else about Vashti. I love her because she was a woman who was not willing to play the game. Even at the hand of having to push back on a system with her husband, who was the king at the time. You know what I mean? That that was something that was unheard of that most women wouldn't have done. It's mm -hmm. a wonder that she didn't die at the time. Mm -hmm. But but that's who I love. Not to take away from the Proverbs 31 woman, who again is amazing, but my point is there are many other women in the biblical text. Deborah was a politician. Deborah was a warrior. Deborah was an intercessor. Deborah was uh, so highly regarded and respected uh, that Barack, who was, uh, who was at the time uh, over the armed forces, would not even make a move without her, um, without her okay, without her saying, yes, I'll go. So you have women here again who she's multifaceted. She, she was married, right? Um, she was multifaceted. She was in the political space. She was a spiritual woman, uh, all of these different things. But this is another aspect of who a woman is. Do you understand what I'm saying? So yeah. there, are, there are various uh, looks at different women in the biblical text that we can uh, take things from or model ourselves after. I just don't know if every person can meet this standard of perfection that we've made the Proverbs 31 woman have. So, okay. We, 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 I had to stop it. We're going to continue. I, I hope you guys were listening. Her feminism, I hope you guys caught her feminism just showed up out of the blue. Okay. She is saying that, okay, they're different. First of all, she says that, oh, there wouldn't be Queen Esther if it wasn't uh, Queen Vash. Okay. Lady, if you read your Bible, to me, I'm like, what are you talking about? Okay. So when you read the book of uh, the scripture, do we believe the scripture is the word of God? Huh? Do we believe like God has spoken? So in her mind, she says like, oh, the way the story ended, we don't, we don't know anything else that happened to Queen Vashti. Okay. Because the story just ended. The book of Esther, it wasn't about Queen Vashti. Okay, it had it wasn't about her. It's telling you the things that happened. Yes, she ended up being a part of the story, but the book of Esther is not about Queen Vashti. So she should have known that. That's number one. And number two, okay, with or without Queen Vashti, okay, God is going to accomplish whatever he set out to do. Okay, and his plan was to save the Jewish people. Do you, are you telling me if Queen Vashti wasn't in the picture, God would have failed to save his people? Absolutely not. Not only that. Okay, she's out here like, oh, people are making, is she, that's what she's saying, people are making this proverb, proverb said one woman to be this, that, and the third. We are not making anything out here, guys. Okay, we are not making anything out here that this is what speaks highly of the proverb said one woman. We go by what the scripture teaches. That's our model. It, it doesn't matter what people are saying. Who cares what people are saying? Okay, whatever people are saying, if it does not conform to the scripture, we are under no obligation to go by that. And this is coming from a woman who is a pastor, who professes to be a Christian. And then she went on to talk about the story of Deborah. And beknownst to her, okay, she's dealing with these guys, okay. Uh, you know, I'm like, challenge this woman. Do you know where uh, the story of Deborah when it's, uh, it's taking place? This is when these people were under judgment Everybody did what was right in their own eyes. This is, this is the time of Deborah. Not only that, the fact that these people had Deborah as their judge was actually judgment to them. Because the woman was not supposed to occupy that seat of, of judging. Okay? Of, of judging. But God chose uh, Deborah for that reason. So Deborah is an exception, not the norm. So she went to seminary. She should know her scriptures, okay? You do not deduct things like, you know, in the scripture based upon exceptional things out of the norm, okay? So it's not norm for a donkey to be speaking, but once upon a time, a donkey spoke. So are we expecting donkeys to be speaking, okay? It wasn't normal to have a woman as a judge during that time, okay? So are we out here like, okay, you're going to be Deborah this, Deborah that. So I guess right now she thinks it's fun because this is a, the defense that these women use, right? They are preaching and teaching. And when you ask them, why are you doing the scripture speaks against that? They'll be like, whoa, wait a minute. Deborah was a judge. Well, Deborah wasn't, uh, wasn't uh, sacrificing in the temple. Okay. So, but anyway, this is the defense that they use, right? But does not hold it in the water. Okay. Deborah is exception, not the rule. So she went on like, you know, not like, oh, some people can speak highly of uh, Proverbs 31 woman. No, the scripture speaks highly of a Proverbs 31 woman. That's a model as uh, what we should strive to be. You don't even have to be married in order for you to be a good godly woman. You don't have to be married in order for you to be a woman who fears the Lord. You don't have to be married in order for you to be virtuous. Okay. 
you, Proverbs for the one woman, she wasn't lazy, okay? Does it take for you to get married in order for you not to be lazy, okay? For you to be diligent, for you to be minding on your business, for you to be resourceful. So there are so many things that you can draw from positive things out of Proverbs 31 woman that you can imbibe yourself even without you uh, uh, not being married, okay? So if you learn those things and the husband comes along, gets married, guess what? You're just going to be executing the things what you've learned as a Proverbs 31 woman. So this is uh, your pastor, your, okay? I know I've been all over the place. The, the Deborah thing, I'm like, no, 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 don't, don't mix up things over here. Okay, the story of Esther was not about uh, Queen Vashti. I know, okay, so here's the thing. Like, you know, like God is not mentioned in the book of Esther. So this is just a story, but the, the providence of God is just on display. Okay, because in order for Esther to be there, to be picked by the queen, right? And then what happened with Haman? Uh, ending up, you know, he was planning to sacrifice uh, the Jews, right? This is anti-Semitism going on even at that particular time. So God always has his people and his remnant. So let a preacher carry Tana. No, 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 no. We read our Bibles so we know <laughs> when people are playing tricks on us, okay? Welcome to Berean Babes. Of all the women you can mention in the scripture, this woman settled for Queen Vash. Do you know why she settled for Queen Vash? She already told us. That's why we were able to see, like, wait a minute, these are the seeds of feminism. And this is why she says, like, oh, you know, she, she said no to her husband, right? She was rebellious to her husband, okay? Because the husband was about to do, uh, you know, of course, we are to follow our husband, right? As long as they're following Christ. We're not to follow them, like, in sin. Absolutely. But as a Christian woman, why you have Vashti as your favorite woman? Okay. I mean, we have Sarah, we have Rebecca, we have Miriam. Okay. I'll give her a pass. She showed Deborah, but she just didn't pick Deborah. Just, just picking Deborah. Okay. She's picking Deborah because of her being a pastor. And then she went on uh, to, you know, obviously speak highly. Okay. I mean, hey, man, <laughs> who is to stop her to say Jezebel? Because Jezebel was also rebellious, right? She was running her house. <laughs> Queen J, Queen J. All right. So let's hear to what she said. Okay. We continue. Let me say this. Let me, let me just say this. Go ahead. Long before <laughs> we get to Proverbs 31, there is Proverbs 20. I want to say right around verse six and seven, I could be wrong. So before the Bible says who can find a virtuous woman, it also says who can find a faithful man. But see, we deal with 31, but we never address Pro Proverbs 20. There was a faithful man before there was a virtuous woman. Mm. So I think, you know, we, I think we got to look at that as well, because oftentimes the standard is for the woman to be virtuous and perfect, but there is no standard and accountability oftentimes taught even from the pulpit about most people never bring up that particular part of a text of who can find a faithful man, because there is this innate understanding that men can't be faithful, that men can't be integral, that men can't be honorable, which we know I believe is a lie. I I don't believe all men are cheaters. I don't believe all men are not integral. I don't believe all men are foul. I just don't believe that. But because it's we preach more about what women should be and less about the standard, since we're talking about the Bible, right. that the biblical text has offered for a man, then the onus is always on a woman to show up as this virtual, pristine, perfect being, whereas we give passes to men because we bypass mm. that faithfulness and we go right to who had the most wives mm. and why we justify that. That's no. that's true. I think me and Tyshawn spoke about that earlier. Yeah. yeah. Whereas guys, it's um even even the virtuous guys when they look at that's our experience. Okay. The scripture talks about both men and women. Yes. Uh. Uh. It is Proverbs twenty six. Right. A good man who can. Uh. Let me read it to you guys. Right. Uh. Yeah. Proverbs twenty six. Right. Many a man proclaims his own steadfast love, but a faithful man who can find. Just like, you know, uh, who can find, uh, you know, he who finds a wife finds a good thing, right? Who can find a virtuous woman, a wise woman. So the scripture talks about both of these things. So when women are looking for a man, they are looking for a faithful man. Okay? When men are looking for a woman, they are looking what? They are looking for uh, a faithful woman, a proverb said one woman. So for her not to speak highly of a prophet said one woman, and then just like, okay, why are you guys just promoting, talking about uh, women, not men? The Bible speaks about both. I didn't understand why she had to push back on that. Okay, I didn't understand why she pushed back on that. If anything, men have even more responsibility than women. Okay, we know Evie was the one who started eating the fruit over there, one who entertained the devil. Okay, but God put the blame on who? On Adam. 
And not only that, God expects like, you know, men, you need to be sacrificing for your wife. You need to be loving your wife as Christ loved the church. I mean, how you do that? Okay. The Christ died for his church, for his bride. That's how much Christ loved his church. And this is what men are called for. So for me, I'm like, okay, you, you, you are a pastor. Come on, man. Why are you speaking like this as if the scripture does not talk to these things? So also this idea of, okay, this is what's called about women. Why do you have, have to bring about men? It's not tit for tat. Okay, it's not tit for tat. Like, okay, women, we're going to sweep our front porch. Okay, whether men are doing it or not, we're going to take care of our business. God is going to see to it to deal with, uh, to deal with the men. So this is just a little subtle thing that, you know, these are the things that are brought up, right? But they, um, there's some hint of feminism in there. Then she went on like, yeah, why do we only praise uh, a man who had a thousand wives? So that was a jab against King Solomon. Okay. But yeah, King Solomon is the one who is giving you this, the book of Proverbs. Why? Because he's been there and done that, right? Vanity of all vanity. There's nothing new under the sun. I've done it all. I've seen it all. So I'm giving you guys wisdom. Don't do the things that I did. Okay. Go a different way. So out here, you're having an issue with King Solomon. Okay. So like, yeah, his example be like, oh, no, no, no. You don't have to be having a thousand wives over there, right? God just gave you one one, one wife and one man. That's it. You start doing your own thing. It produces results. And look at uh, King, King, uh, King Solomon. So, man, that's... Uh, the lady pastor over there, okay? But there is more, okay? <laughs> you are, li she's reading the scriptures with a feminism lenses. So as a result, you, you, you're going to find yourself fighting against, fighting against, fighting against. Just read the text. That's it. Read the text. All right. Yeah. Um, you know, often about, particularly in my, in my field of work, when I went to, to seminary, there was no class that taught me what to do with my body after I preached, after I've poured out to people and what a natural response to that is. It's, I know it's some pastors, some ministers, some elders in the chat. If y'all in the chat and y'all single, I just want y'all to put up some, put some hands up if you know, what, if you know, if you know what I'm talking <laughs> about. But, but they didn't teach me on what to do when I'm depleted in, in that moment. Um, and when you've poured out in that moment. Now, there are lots of people that can go home and make love to the person that they're, that they're married to. That's a way to replenish yourself. But for a person like me who, who cannot right now have that option to do that, I have to find other ways to insulate and refuel myself. Otherwise, I might find myself oh. in a situation that is very detrimental and unhealthy. A lot of spiritual leaders, I'm shifting for a minute, a lot of spiritual leaders um, fail have moral failures, particularly in this area. And I'm not saying all, I'm saying some, yeah. um, because they poured, but didn't know how to refuel. They, they, they gave, but didn't know what to put, to refuel or put back into themselves um, that left them depleted. And when you are operating in a very depleted space, you make decisions oftentimes that are always not in your best interest. So you can be in those moments led by your flesh and you can make decisions that can alter the course of your life if you are not careful. So that's in any field, but I'm speaking specifically because oftentimes people go, well, oh, do you deal with this? Yes. Am I a woman? Right. Absolutely. Right. Do you know what I'm saying? It is a real thing. The Bible says you put on the Lord Jesus Christ. I got to put him on every day when it when it comes to that. Do you know what I'm I saying? It. it has to be a conscious decision that I make. I'm not approved. I'm not any of that. I've been married before. So I feel what that feels like in my body. I turned 43 this year. And so life is happening. Do you know what I'm saying? I get it. And so you figure out how to, look at his face. You figure out how to navigate <laughs> yeah, and move Both of them dropped the age. That's always fine. I don't, I don't mind. It's, I'm good with it now. Everything about her just, <laughs> is, is just exudes confidence. Listen, yes. I'm Everything. good with it now. I'm good with it. But, so, mm -hmm. no, I'm so sorry. Because yes. I, this is so good. Because <laughs> a lot. Okay. So I'm, I'm going to explain to you what she just said. Okay. I listened to it at least three times just to make sure what I heard was exactly what she was saying, okay? So she was asked the question as you as a single woman, right? How do you navigate your singleness whenever, you know, you're going to experience ages and everything, right? That is normal, okay? That is normal because we understand, right? Sex is only reserved for marriage, which she does agree, 
But then she explained to her, she, she told us this, I've, I've never preached before, so I don't know. So she's speaking from her own experience, and this is what she said. She went to seminary, okay, but she was never taught at the seminary the things that are going to happen to you after you finish preaching. So for her, according to her own testimony, right, like, you know, when she preaches, huh, then she, you know, because she's single, then she has no way for her to navigate those ages after she finishes preaching, okay? So I don't know that experience because I, I don't preach at all. But uh, if a pastor is married, you know, you know, we know sex is in the context of marriage, right? So we have no issues over there. But for me, I find it very troubling and very weird that if once she finishes the preaching, and then her ages are, are high. Um, to me, I'm like, mm, that's kind of weird. Okay? You are preaching the word of God. You know, like, you know, sex is good. God is the one who designed sex. Sex, there's nothing wrong with sex, right? But to me, it just made me pause like, wait a minute, mama. Maybe that's why you shouldn't be preaching. To begin with, women shouldn't be preaching. I do not permit a woman to teach or to exercise authority over a man. The Bible forbids women to be, to be preaching and teaching to men on, uh, uh, during worship when the church is gathered. So the scripture is clear on that. But she preaches, she teaches to men on a Sunday. Okay, that's her job. She actually went to seminary and she has qualification for those things. It doesn't matter how many qualifications you have. The scripture forbids you to be doing those things. So could it be like you are operating outside what God has designed for you? Then these are the things that are going to happen for you after you finish uh, preaching. You know what I'm saying? So I felt that uh, that was weird. Thank you for bringing that up. So, yeah. So according to her, like to me, I'm like, okay, after you finish preaching and teaching, this is not supposed to deplete you. It's supposed to fill you to the capacity. And then she feels depleted. Uh, the answer to that, like, yeah, it doesn't make sense. You're right. You know what I'm saying? Like, no. The, the scriptures, the word of God is what fulfills us, right? A man shall not live on blood alone, but the, but the word of God. So, and not only that, right? To me, oh, you know, catch this. So, no, whatever she's saying, those are experiences. It's a lie. How do I know that's a lie? We have Timothy, right? Timothy was single. He was out there preaching and teaching. Paul was single. Okay. He wrote three quarters of the Bible. He was out there preaching and teaching. So if these men were depleted, how else were they able to, uh, to do the, the work of God like they did? And not only that, God says like in people have been gifted the, the gift of singleness, right? So no, you know what I'm saying? There's nothing wrong with sex. There's nothing wrong having those desires, right? It's who those desires are for, okay? Are you married? We understand those things. But what she just said, I'm like, no, woman, like, no, that's kind of like weird. And it, the fact that you're finished preaching and you're feeling depleted, that's even more reason for you not to be mounting that pulpit. Okay. They've been trying. His face. You figure out how to navigate yeah, and move around. Both of them dropped the age. That's all I, 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 that I way. don't mind. It's, I'm good with it now. Everything about her just is, is just exudes confidence. Listen, yes. I'm good Everything. with it now. I'm good with it. So, <laughs> okay. Oh, can you see the way these men are praising uh, this lady, right? They are praising her i mean you know this you know we want to people to be praised and everything but to me like these men are so amazed by what she's saying and it's like wow you're dropping in jewels we've never heard about these things you've never seen about this i'm like you guys do you read your bibles you know it's just like come on man you know not a, you know there's some good things that she'll see right but we are just looking at the scriptures here and be like no 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 Okay, so if these men are just like, they're thinking like, wow, you know, this is it. I'm also like, guys, start reading your Bibles, man. You know, these women are just going to mislead you and you think this is it.